inspire. Welcome back to Starting Now. I'm your host, Jeff Saris. This is the show where I talk to entrepreneurs and creatives to reveal the unexpected paths to where they are today. Today, my guest is my guest, my guests. I have a, a two for today. So today, my guest is Bruce Wayne, um, aka Marlon Wood, and Bundy. His producer, Bruce Wayne, is the persona of Marlon. He is a rapper, musician, um, and teacher like teacher by day uh rapper by night and they've done some amazing videos together music and videos but the videos are what really jumped out to me they did a um they did essentially like a theme song for the goats nft project they've worked with aralore and writing the music for um for their radio drama but yeah this is a great conversation we dive into everything from both of their perspectives and then dive into sort of the um Bruce's approach to writing music and sort of what's next from them. So without further ado, my conversation with Bruce and Bundy. Seattle, that's your team? Seahawks? Oh, Lord, man. <laughs> listen, listen, here we go, here we go. I am a, I'm a fan of sports. I'm a fan of, you know, places that I've been that, uh, you know, that I feel like it's it's my home. So I could say Tampa and Seattle, you mm-hmm. know, are, are part of my home. So, you know, so. Yeah, for sure. So then are yeah. you rooting for the Bucks or? Oh, listen, <laughs> I'm always, I'm, I'm... <laughs> because look, when people, when people like watch this, they can be like, oh, he, he, he's tripping. <laughs> so uh, am I rooting for the Bucks? I would say, yeah. Um, but I'm also rooting for like just people I know, good people, good teams, you know, just just some fun. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's that's what I do. But yeah, going to school in Washington though, I mean everything yeah. sort of ties together with Seattle and like I I can't imagine it's easy to uh to just sort of jump from those uh deep seated roots. Right. Yeah. Right, for sure. Yeah, it's it's uh like I said, the the love that I've been shown out there in the West Coast in Seattle is uh, something that um, it goes unmatched. So that's where I am. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So by day, you're a teacher. Chris, yeah. by day, what are you? What are you up to? Uh, just music and NFTs. Awesome. Yeah. Really so you're it. you're uh, full time here. So stay you have... home dad is what we'll, what we'll go with. I know that works. Daughter yeah. all day. You know, the, <laughs> uh, it's funny because I never know what to tell people. Like I'm like, yeah, I do music and I flip pictures of animals. Like, what? <laughs> How could that go wrong? You know. So yeah. we'll go with stay at home dad. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I like it. That works well. But yeah, so as a teacher, teacher by day artist by night and everything how do you uh, juggle those two because those are very different uh worlds i feel for you i mean it's it's still uh juggling them is, is not hard because throughout the day there's certain things that i will hear that um that allows me to you know be creative in the writing as a, as an artist um and i think that some of the stories that you know i'm i'm around with the students it allows me to think back and reflect on what I'm going through, what my friends are going through, what they've gone through, but then also what they're listening to. So that gives like those conversations about artists that are popping today. It's like, okay, well, let me go listen to what they're doing and how can I, you know, find a way not only to uh, get my students to listen to, listen to some of the old school stuff, but also I have to know that, this is what this is what music is today, you know. So it's always that relationship. So teacher, artist, it combines throughout the day, all, every day. So that's why I love. Uh-huh. Do you feel like uh, Bruce Wayne, the the character, is uh, also present in the classroom, or is that sort of uh, different? Is there is there a differentiation there? Nah, I'm always gonna be present. Not at all. Uh-huh. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm always gonna be present because majority of the students know that I do music, so they just go say, "What's up, Bruce?" So they. <laughs> So they say that in the classroom. So for me, it's always going to be the the thinker, um, the entrepreneur, you know, whatever his father and his mother passed down, so to speak, to to him. It's similar to what my dad, uh, Batman, what his nickname was playing sports. He brought it down to me. So it's kind of goes hand in hand. So, yeah. Yeah. And for people who aren't aware, uh, who is Batman? 
Oh my God. Look, <laughs> the the real Batman is my pops, Richard uh Batman Wood, uh Elizabeth, New Jersey. Um, had that nickname since college and he wore it all over his pads and stuff when he played uh for the Bucks. So for me it was just natural just to keep that keep that name going within the family. You know, that's my pops. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I love yeah. I love going the Bruce Ra- Bruce Wayne route because it's it's that nod back, but then also you can take that and run with it uh, mm-hmm. down your own path. So for me, what I've done with with R and R, which is Bundy, uh-huh. um, what we're doing, I'm just using that as just like songwriting and the things that we have together. It's just to have something that I can pass down to my kids. Um, just so if something were to pop off and we have R and R records, which, you know, you got to talk to Bundy and <laughs> Bundy about that. Cause without him, you know what I'm saying? That's, there's no me. They call me modest Marlon, whatever yeah. like he's just being modest right now. But at the end of the day, it's just, I felt like, let me find a way to contribute to what they've already started. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So just learn from them. It's my boys. At the, at the end of the day, it's always good for everybody to have their own identity, if that's what we want to call it, or LLC, you know, mm-hmm. as a business. Mm-hmm. Granted, you can still work with everybody else. That's what people forget. Yep. Like, yep. just because you have your own thing doesn't mean you can't branch and work with other people. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's so important. I mean, because together we're so much, so much better, but so much more um, influential, can have a bigger impact together than Definitely. alone, just across the board. Yeah. So how did you guys first, I, I normally like to really rewind, but I kind of want to, I want to set the stage for how you guys connected and yeah. how you got to where you are today. So where do you guys know each other from originally? Talk to We've buddy. been, let's say little league baseball is when we first <laughs> met. Nice. What, eight, nine, 10 yep. years old, somewhere around yep. there. Yep. And we just grew up, went to school together. Pretty much how it all started off. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's funny though. Cause we, 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 we totally went two separate ways after high school. Not no no bad feelings or anything like that. You know, just life happens. Mm-hmm. He went his way, I went mine, and then what about five years ago, six years ago, we linked back up. Yeah, about five. We, yeah, yeah, about five years ago we linked back up, and it's been running ever since. Nice. Yeah. So after high school, you obviously went to University of Washington, played football, or yeah. shortly after, along the path, right, you ended right, up at right, Washington right. and played football. Mm-hmm. Where did you go, Bundy? What What was sort of that's, the next step after uh, high school for you? That's when I went to North Carolina. Nice. In the relationship, thinking mm-hmm. that was going to work out. You know how that is, young and dumb, you know? Uh-huh. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now so, we're back home. So yeah, you were yeah completely separate co. So it just sort of, it makes sense. It makes sense to be yeah. so far apart, hard to, hard to stay in touch, and everything just changes. Like we have different life experiences oh, yeah, that just happen. Oh, yeah. So what was your uh, focus at that time? Were you in music right out of school? Was it something that you got to later? Where were you? Where were you in your life? A uh, Bundy. Yes. Oh, uh, man. No, we weren't even. I wasn't even thinking about music. Bruce has been thinking about music his whole life. I just think it finally he finally realized it here these last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, no, man, I went out there. It's a funny story. I went out there and met some friends and. Literally, we would sit in the garage in the corner with, with you know, pillow sheets up and stuff in the corner of a booth because we didn't have, you know, we weren't fancy, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I can't rap. I can't even ABC rap, you know. So it's like I had to learn something. So that's when I had one of the guys teach me how to make beats. Mm-hmm. So from that day on, I just picked it up and we just ran with it. And now we're back here running it here in Tampa. Nice. So were you doing a lot of beats for different artists and things? Sort of what did that look like? So it was really just, so they called themselves OTF back in the day, only the fam. Mm-hmm. It was basically a group of about 12 to 15 guys that were all related. Like they were brothers or cousins. I was literally the only one that was, that was not related to them. Um, and I pretty much just helped with anything that they needed anywhere we went. Man, it's so funny. Cause I think about the stuff that we do now compared to then. And like, we literally had to go buy ink from the store to print out the CD covers to put them on CDs. Like that's, that's how far back it goes. It's so, it's so crazy to think. Cause now it's like, Oh, you just put it up on TuneCore and boom, all your music is everywhere. But back then, man, we were in the street making CD covers, and selling them, giving them away for free. It, it's so funny how it is now. And how was that then sort of getting by making money through music? <sighs> it was a lot harder back then. Mm-hmm. It, it really was. There wasn't as much exposure. You know, if you were in Charlotte, you really, 
could only get to Charlotte and, and that was it, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you could drive or, you know, fly other places, but now, I mean, you can literally sit at your house and have to literally never leave and, and be able to make, make and sell music. So definitely a lot harder back then than, than what today's about. Yeah, so Marlon, were you doing music on your own before you guys reconnected? What did that uh, journey look like? Because like playing football, I know football at that moment is probably life. Like this is this is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. Sort of uh, what are, what do those interstitial years look like for you? Well, for me, my freshman year in college, uh, one of my uh, roommates, he was a singer. So he won a whole bunch of talent shows and I would just, uh, you know, freestyle over everyone else's beats. And that was that's how I used to do it just for years and years and just writing things that I would say weren't true about me. So it's like normal, like, oh, I have this type of car and I have this and I have that. But you're not really living that lifestyle. But that's the only thing I knew. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was always about poetry. Everything I've done was poetry, 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 you know, giving out to the ladies, you know, hey, that's what I did. <laughs> um, but I think the, the the very first time where I got serious about it is when uh, my teammate, uh, Alex Mercier, he's done songs. He's uh, wrote songs for the Kardashian shows, Abercrombie and Fitch. Like he's he's big time out there in L.A. Um, but we made a, a CD for the University of Washington where we were playing. So that was my very first time of actually going to a studio, recording it and having the stadium and fans and doing like little press releases. So for me, I've always been like writing. Um, But at the end of the day, it was more of like, how can I like put it together? Like I was just just writing down poetry and raps, but it, it didn't come together. So for me, that's where it all started. Um, football was a was an outlet, but sometimes, you know, being away from home, I got depressed. I got sad. So for me, it was just how can I get my mind, you know, off of all these things that I'm going through? And that's what music has always been for me. And then so writing poetry, then being like your escape. Did you consider yourself a writer at that time or was it just a natural thing you were doing? I think it was more like a natural thing. I didn't know to what extent that I was, uh, that I was able to, that I was able to grow. Um, so for me, it could just be something I can just go on a drive for 30 minutes and get out of, get out of Seattle and I can just see trees and nature. And then everything would just start coming to me, whether it be about some like laying in my bed, staring at the ceiling and like reflecting with no noise around the rain hitting my window. So those types of things, um, I never thought of it until probably like five years ago when I started, you know, linking up with Bundy, you know, that's where everything just came together. Interesting. So you were writing, but then it, it really didn't have that next, uh, that connecting mm-hmm. thread. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. So that's just, I was, I was so, just going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So innate then it's just a natural yeah. thing that you, uh, a proclivity that you just had. So that's, mm-hmm. that is, it's amazing. Like I really think those different experiences like that are so valuable because then you start to um, the doing the action is what, how you start to figure out maybe directions you want to go and what you want to do. And then what year was the uh, university of Washington, the album, the song that was in 2006. And when I went up there, this is before uh, Bundy went out there, they're still playing it. So oh, nice. Yeah, so I reached out to the marketing department and said, "Hey, me and my uh, me and my friend, we have a song for you all." They was like, "Oh, you're da da da. We still play the song in the stadium." And I'm like, "Oh, wow, that's crazy!" <laughs> After so so many years, so they knew who I was, which was which was a blessing, you mm-hmm. know. Definitely. So it's the same song then that you recorded there. Is that correct, or is this a different song? It's a totally different. Okay, different yeah, song. We, yeah, yeah. We made we made a whole like twelve song CD for cancer, uh, for charity, mm-hmm. um, back then. So I always thought, you know, when we got me and Bunny started, you know, doing the music. You know, we've always talked about that. That hey, look, we should always do. I should do a song for my school. We should do this, and this one finally just took off. Uh huh. Yeah, I wanted to talk sort of about this lane that you guys are in because. I think it's brilliant how you're connecting with these, like with the schools, like doing um, 
doing this as a way to support uh, a cause and but also creating these like viral moments i guess through the videos because the the music the production the the music video itself like all of it is so top notch that like i don't know that there's a lot of people doing this for maybe smaller like schools and different um organizations and things so how did you sort of jump into that is was the starting off starting off point excuse me the uh original album or was there was there discussion or was it just sort of a natural thing I don't know, Bundy. What do you think? You want me to? You want me to keep talking, man? What's up? Yeah, you can. You can answer that. You can answer that one. I'm, try, I'm just trying to think, like, how it even all came about. To be honest with you, how we? I know we started talking about it. You know, we talked about him at his school because he he uh, works at IMG, which is like one of the best sports schools in the nation. And you know, just trying to figure out, you know, the kids are next in line for everything. You know, so why would you not want them behind you? You know, we're we're older. We know we know our lane. We're not out here talking about, you know, drugs and sex and, and stuff like that. You know, it's it's more what we relate to and and what we're passionate about. You know, I have four kids. He's got two. Like that's that's where we want to be is in in those in the youth eyes and, and teach people. Not the proper way, but, you know, a better life. They don't you know, like just there's always something. If you keep going, something's going to happen. Never give up. And that's that's kind of what we try and instill. And, you know, we do other music, obviously, with other people and stuff like that. But the majority of stuff we do individually is more inspiring. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's come through and it's been uh, well received, especially on YouTube, which is amazing. Like, I love seeing like the reach and soar, like how well that did. It's it's really awesome to see. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think um it's, it's over time. I think I I started to understand that you know working with Bundy and uh, Skyler, uh, my engineer, and you know Soda and uh, a couple other producers, um, get like Wild Childs and other artists. It's just like there's so many different ways to do music, and it's not just one thing. So that's where. I think those discussions like, hey, I think I should do a song for um, my Husky to see what that, see what we can come up with, who has a beat, who can send me this? And then it started like, well, my engineer was like, hey, you should, you should start like doing songs for like teams or, you know, sports, whatever, whatever it is. And that's where I started doing uh, just anything that we can come up with while still doing other music. Like we have so much, we have so many songs, but why not have a, another a business to go along with it that a lot of people aren't doing? So why not? Yeah. I mean, creating those, those pieces that are promoting someone else and supporting, like whether it's, it's goats or whether it's uh, the Seahawks. I know you're trying to have that mm -hmm. one out there and then you have the Huskies yeah. and everything else and then soar. Yeah. Like all of that is just, it's so smart. It's, you're giving value to people. You're, you're giving them something that they can all rally around and be proud of. And then in return, you're getting the, the recognition from it. So I think it's a, a brilliant approach to what you're doing. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it, and it's good people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what we, that's all about relationships. Buddy says it all the time. It's all about relationships. Like, how that sore song came about was the uh, drum major director, um, John Aguilar, uh, works at the school, but he's, he was also a UW alumni. So um, he, he reached out. I met him at a band practice when we were shooting the music video. He's like, hey, that'd be dope if, you know, you do a song with my band, you know, that'd be, and we just, there you go, right there. So it's all about those relationships and just trying to make sure that uh, we can we can build and not just do one thing, we can do multiple things. Yeah, what was really cool about Soar is that the kids were actually involved. They played the beat. All the sounds in there are their instruments. And that that's you don't see many people doing that. And that was that was a really cool experience. I mean, to see, and to see the kids light up and and just so much joy in doing it, man, nothing's better than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's a completely I don't want to say completely, but 
the network and connections and the like goodwill that you establish with other people is something that can be overlooked a lot of times where it's like there's a lot of transactional relationships i feel especially in web3 and nfts where people are like oh i'm gonna music as well this. for sure yeah, yeah. i'm sure and yeah. it's but it's like when you have someone genuine like or a couple genuine people going out there doing things helping people supporting something um, it feels like it it always ends up coming back. So sort of in building, in building the the network and connections and things, how would you say you started to get your maybe your foot in Bundy connecting with people? Was it through the initial crew? was were there other things that you've done? Um, music, it's funny. The, my other my my partner that runs r and r uh, Mike Hallman, um, he started this before we even thought about it because his little brother, and his friends wanted to rap so my my boy's all about money so he's like let's figure out how we can make money with this and so let's start a record label so he started a label the kids all went their separate ways um crazy story i had this job for like eight years i got fired for no reason and i was looking for something man i've always known my whole life i can't work for other people i'm I'm a i'm a leader not a follower and i just it, it, it's been tough so <clears throat> he brought about let's let's start doing a music thing and that's how it all came back. He, uh, we, we bought a studio. We put it in a garage. And then, psh, what, a couple of weeks later, somehow we linked up with Bruce again, and, and it's been going ever since. So that was after losing your job. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I had nothing at that point. <laughs> it was. It was. A, it was a rough start. It, you know. It's. It's. It's cool to look back on, and that's why I keep saying, man, if you just do what you got to do and just keep grinding, man, stuff will always look up. Always. So that transitional period that that is a tough period at that time bruce you're you're teaching already or um is this something that came along later because you're also serving the military correct yeah so um once i once i was done playing football um i taught middle school for a couple of years just training i still had i had some offers to go back and play ball but for me i felt like you know, having a child and, you know, you want to start your career, graduated college, like why not just start something mm -hmm. um, besides just, you know, paying a trainer to go train and you don't have a, a real 100% guarantee to make that team. So um, I just felt like, let me just do this. Um, but I, I started, you know, uh, I would say loving what I was doing, being around the students, encouraging them, sharing my story. And I wanted to make a difference. So I just went into the military to go and get my master's. But um, I wanted to do some fun stuff. But, uh, you know, like I said, being being at my age going into the military, I knew that I'm not 18, I'm not 19. So I want to make sure that I, I choose a, an MOS that I'll be able to come home, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not not do anything too wild, but I had some opportunities. I was, I was jumping out of some stuff and uh, moving around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I was uh, teaching military, and then it got back into uh, academic advising, learning specialist. So that's what I've been doing these last, uh, you know, ten years. And what does that um, look like? So when you were in school, what is sort of the economics of? college sports because i know it's sort of it feels like a mess like it's so hard to right. maintain right nowadays now. yeah, yeah nowadays now. yeah they have that nil um which they'll probably you know do away with it maybe in a couple of years but they just knew that a lot of athletes were just taking money under the table yeah. um so for me i was only getting uh she what was it 989 dollars a month in which me and my roommate were just splitting the rent and then you had gas, you had a cell phone, you had to get food. Um, back in the day, what my school, they only gave us like dinners. So you had to, with that check, you had to get your own breakfast and lunch unless your parents are going to send you some money. So for me, I had a child as well. So I'm trying to send money home and doing this and trying to stay focused. Um, like I said, that's when all those the the poetry came into play is is more, when I got to escape from everything. Um, but nowadays, these kids making hundreds of thousands of dollars, some making millions of dollars. But what I always try to tell them, like some of my athletes now, 
who are making that type of money, they always text me and say, hey, look, what should I do? Yeah. So for me, it's like, hey, put it away. Don't touch it, you know, because you're gonna always going to have those friends, those teammates, those family members who are going to want some money from you. And it, just because you keep on getting it now, you two years from now, you may not get it. So you have to be mindful. So I'm always I, – I'm texting kids from Alabama, Clemson, and the North Carolina. Like I'm, I'm doing all that all day, every day. Yeah, that and that is so important because, like, I feel like there's so many like horror stories of professional athletes. They had, they were making nothing in college. Right. They make everything, but like you said, I mean, you could have a year, two years, and something could happen. Right. That could be it, and that that yeah. paycheck basically ends there. So it's so important to have someone like you in their corner and yeah. really being like, okay, this is, this is what I recommend. This is my experience yeah. and what I've seen. Like that again comes back to the giving like just giving back to right. to people and trying to help i think that's yeah just so important and so valuable yeah. so oh, yeah. let's jump now a little bit forward to nfts and how this world this web3 world how you've integrated it in because i like everything you've you've done sort of pre nfts like sort of mm -hmm. building this this artist uh, producer relationship and things um but what made you what made you dive into this world? I guess Bundy, it, I, yeah. since this is your full time, it sounds like yeah, you're the catalyst it, yeah. for this one. That guy. So what that brought guy. you here into uh, so, into crypto? So how I got started with goats is I got in there. I started like paying attention. This is what me and Bruce are really good at. Bruce is really good at this. He he understands when he does a song, he pays attention to everything. So what I mean by that is like goats. I went in there, learned some stuff. I had him go in there and learn some stuff about the guys. And we actually wrote the song specifically for goats in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, most people aren't doing that. You know, it's like people don't think outside the box. Sometimes it's it's really that simple, man. It, the community loved it, you know, so that's when we ended up shooting the video. And yeah, So are you sort of out there now open to bringing in other projects and doing things like that? Sort of where are you looking at next sort of in this space with regards to what you guys do? Oh man, there's just so much. I don't know what the next step is, man. Just, just keep doing what we've been doing, linking with certain people. We work with everybody. If their values align with us, you know, that's when great people link together, something good always happens. So really, man, it's just staying focused, you know, linking with these other projects and whatever comes about, comes about. There's no real, real that's you know like way we're looking at right now i should say yeah yeah you're doing taking action and seeing right. how it all comes together what works exactly. for you probably pivoting and things on the video production side is that something you guys are doing like in-house do you send that out because all the videos are amazing they're so well done make kid uh, make kid our, <laughs> our cameraman is the best man yeah. make kid is he's yeah. unbelievable like it doesn't even feel like we're working when we're making our videos but it, it's cool to see man yeah mid kid he is by far hands down one of the best videographers in the game for sure oh yeah yeah for sure i think um the the first time well the only time i've seen him actually like really really say hey look i got you was when we did the uh the sore music video so he flew out there with me um he was on the he was on the court he was moving around we talked about a couple of things but then they needed it based upon what they were asking like two days or three days. We literally got something to eat. Me and Zan, shout out to Zan. Love you. Appreciate you so much. Uh, he said, no, I'm going to get some sleep. I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to knock it out. He literally, we only had like, I went to go get him lunch. He like, he literally sat there from like seven o'clock in the morning until like four o'clock or something when he had to, when I had to go drop him off to the airport just to, but he said he wasn't even done yet. So he's worked on, on the plane. He worked on it as soon as he touched down. And that's why I came out to be, man. So like, I thought he was done a couple of times. He's like, nah, not even close, but that's, that's, he was just in the zone. I didn't bother him. I just watched my TV, didn't do nothing. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, he's just, he's just, he's one of the best, man. I, every, any any chance we get to go anywhere, or do something creative, he's gonna go with it. That's 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 our guy. 
for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys have a great synergy amongst all three of you and anyone else you're working with, but like, yeah, you guys are, you're building something great, building something like just, uh, special something that stands out because it's so easy to get lost in the shuffle whether it's in nft and uh Mm -hmm. web3 in general but music especially i mean because there's so much just so much Mm -hmm. competition and so much um i don't know if it's like sort of the the um the people who are already in the ecosystem like they get the bulk of the attention by so much so to be able to jump out and do something like right. soar to work with goats to do these different things. I think it's brilliant. I love that direction that you're taking. So Bruce, would you want to go completely full time as a musician or do you like having it as a side, uh, like a side hustle, a side? Oh, no, I'm trying, I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do this full time for me. The, I think the, what speaking of Aerolor and mama bucks and, and big bucks, they, uh, just knowing them, just like Bundy said, they're just great people mm-hmm. and within the goats as well. So for me, I thought about when she asked me to do this voiceover character for Levi, it was, we talked about it in New York. That's the very first time I met her. And I said, Hey, I, I know you act. I would love to do something creative. Let me know if you we want to write a song together. Cause she's uh, an oh, amazing, amazing singer. Oh my God. Amazing. Yeah. So I just, uh, I told myself that after I really want to say after New York, um, I think that really hit with hit home with me just to see the goats, see the the lights of Times Square, seeing people that don't even know you, that they invest their time and money to see you succeed. That right there let me know, like we're onto something. It may, t- it's going to take some time. Everything is, you know, money, but also it's about those relationships. So for me, if I could, you know, get my own little studio at home and just start putting out stuff. Oh my gosh. I got so many, stuff. look, I don't even want to, I don't even want to go into those types of things to where like, I'm. Um, if I can do this full time, I'm going to do it full time. That's not, that's not a, I can do that within my sleep. I'm just, that's, I'm humble but I'm confident at the same time of the things that I've written, um, but also the ideas that I have. And that's just come from experience of being around, you know, Bundy's and, you know, the knowledges and Skylar, like my persona, like all these artists, producers, they've taught me a lot about what I'm able to do. Um, so yeah, I'm, if I can, yeah, I do this full time without it. No question. What would you say is the biggest thing holding you back? shoot money (laughs) i think it's fear right so when you take that leap of faith into doing something that you love to do for me it's like it's a backing right i i have kids so you know insurance and i'm thinking about like like Bundy did it like I don't I can't um, I can't think of like how you just he just stopped when he said he was going to stop. I'm like, bro, you're tripping. (laughs) But he knew he knew within himself that his family was going to be okay. I know my family's going to be okay, but I was groomed to, you know, work the job, you know, provide for your family and have the, you know, like have those things. So I'm trying to put some change away. So I know like, hey. I'm going to give this a go mm-hmm. and, and see what happens because I, I have good, good, good people with me that, that know what I'm capable of doing. You know, that's always, you know, once, once they told me that I'm like, Hey, let's rock and roll. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The right people in your corner is so important and the experience. Huge. Yeah. Like yeah. both of you with your own lanes of experience is so important because again, like alone as an artist, you can only do so much like you can create, but then you need the producer. You need the, you need to be able to create the the assets like the music videos and all of these different things that you guys are just knocking out of the park. I mean, if there were projects that wanted to have goats ask type videos done for them, is that something you guys would be like open to doing or something you're even considering maybe pitching or anything? Oh yeah. We're, we're, we work with everybody. Like I said, it's, mm-hmm. you know, 
I don't want to say everybody, but you know, we we try our best to work with everybody. You know, especially if our our values align the same, and and in Web three, you're definitely going to find more people of that that nature that you know they're just good, honest people. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we're always willing and open to to definitely do some work with other people for sure. Yeah, and oh, I yeah. always I always look at the service based business sort of as the like the shortest path. You know, like if you're able to give someone that very specific product like there's right. always the sort of the cliche like the ways to make money if you can help someone get paid get laid or lose weight so it's like right. essentially through your music and everything mm -hmm. you're doing you're helping people get paid i mean it's what right. in the end you're you're bringing more eyes you're i mean get paid in is all relative because like the school like getting eyes on the school and bringing money into a, a charity and supporting things and doing all these different things that you've done it's mm -hmm. You already have the formula there. Like you've you've proven it not just once, but repeatedly. So there's definitely something there. And yeah, I mean, if you guys ever have ever want to like throw around ideas or anything, this is like what I do is help people build businesses. So I would love to see you, Bruce, be able to go full time, be able to help you however I can, just sort of in guidance and like ideas or whatever it is. But I mean, there's definitely something really special here. Like it just you just feel it like you feel it just right. in the in the air right. with everything oh yeah for sure i think that's the creative that's the creative space that um that i've been able to tap into and that's like with bundy's like here create a song for this or think about something like that and it's just like we already said like do things that are not normal why not mm -hmm. like i i can create a song for any group within this web three space that's going to focus on their ideas, their passion, what they're doing it for, um, and create something that's, that's unique and different. Um, and I think that's, that's something that we can definitely do for sure. Mm -hmm. If I'm, if I'm going to create a song, I'm just going to create a song. That's, that's, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to talk about the Huskies, the, the Bucks or the Seahawks or, um, the the acronym for soar and what it means to the school like if there's a company or projects i'm going to sit down and do my research and then yeah i'll add my little things about where i'm from and what i do or who i am like bruce wayne all this i can be very lyrical in that aspect but as it pertains to something that's uh i would a say niche. people yeah like niche. people niche fam, like right. community like I'm always going to make sure that I try my best to focus on the people because they're the ones that make it go. Um, yeah, I want to make tons of money, but at the same time, like I said, we want to build relationships with people and also make sure that we're doing right by them. You know, and what they actually uh, can sit down and sit at the table or ride in their car and be like, man, he's really talking about us. This is what we're passionate about. This is our, this is our baby, so to speak. Um, and I want to make sure that, you know, we uh, put something together for them um, in that, in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. I mean, you're, you're creating it for that audience. I mean, that is, it's, it's a product in the end, but it's a product that like when it's music and when it's art, it, there's always that like sort of fine line because it's a product, but it also is like an expression at the same time. Right. So it's so important right. to, to straddle that line in the way that that's genuine that that comes through as genuine too, right. but also sort of uh, checking all those boxes. All right, yeah, for sure. But yeah, like thank you guys for taking the time to sort of dive into everything, talk about your story. Like, thank you. I think it's always valuable just to sort of see the different journeys that people are on because we all have our own path, and right. when we can see someone and listen to someone, watch a video, whatever it is, and see like oh i'm actually at that point like mm -hmm. with bruce or with bundy like i i'm at this point in my life i see where they got to where i want to be and i think that's just so valuable because the more we can connect with these different stories the more we can kind of see like oh maybe there is something more for me like me i'm not stuck exactly where right. i am which i think is is so important but where should we send people to uh follow along check out everything you guys are up to individually together either way so, I mean, you can go to my Instagram. Uh, you can just type in BWDK83. 
Um, that's just simple. You'll see me with the gloves and everything else on. That's 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 what I do. Um, but yeah, everything is is Bruce Wayne DK eighty three. My football number. Um, but yeah, that's everything. Just follow me. Listen to music. I'll have the links for the YouTube. Um, music videos, everything up there for sure. Cool. And where does DK come from? Uh, that's the Dark Knight. Oh, so I just put, of course. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's just the good side and the bad side. You know, I'm living the the glamorous life and the Bruce Wayne side of things, but then the Dark Knight, he's talking that real, like that's me. You know, that's that's where it comes from. Yeah. So wait, would you explain that? Actually, I want to hear a little bit more. Oh man. So there's going to be songs where I'm going to. Bruce Wayne, he's a bachelor, right? He has all the money in the world and he can do anything, go anywhere at any given time, right? He has everything that he wants. But in the dark night, he's he's in a battle with himself and trying to figure out who he is. So that stems from the the sadness, depression, the anger, um, the ups and downs of life. And you're really trying to figure out how you're going to you don't even know who you are at times, right? So that's when you'll, if you actually listen to the music, I'll talk about the loves and the sadness. And then I'll talk about the pain that I went through and what's going on in my head. And that's where the the dark night, he will, you know, start to come about, so to speak. Um, so I, I just, that's how that whole back and forth goes um, uh, through a lot of my music. Yeah. And do you read a lot? Like, is poetry something you're interested in just innately? Oh, yeah, I got I I have to read. Um, for me, I tell the students all the time is that you can read one page, find five words that will allow you to expand on anything that you that you want to do and be creative, because there's words in there that you you don't even know that you'll look up and say, like, Oh, I didn't know what that meant. Oh, let me let me try to write that into. So I'm always reading. So people are always like, "What are you reading?" I'm not. I'm not, sometimes I'm not really reading. I'm just finding those words that that will create that spark in my brain. And yes, Bundy already knows that I'm too lyrical at times. But hey, listen, I got to be creative. <laughs> I have to be. I just can't say May birthday. Like I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be very intricate. But but reading helps. Um, it's just like you'll find something in there any given time. What does it mean to be too lyrical? Yeah. Oh, oh, Bundy knows. Um. <laughs> so, so basically, you know, music has has dumbed down. You know, from yeah. considerably from when rap was really considered rap. You know, they spit stories, storytelling, real lyricists. It's not like that anymore. And it's tough because we're older, you know, we're both 38 years old. So that's not really our lane. So, mm -hmm. so, okay. So here we go, Bunny. here we go. So this web three song, if you listen to it, the very first thing I say, if, if you don't understand the web three stuff then you're not going to understand it, right. but Bundy's right. like, Bundy hit me up the other day. He's like, I'm not sure if they're going to get it. I'm like, nah, they're going to get it. So it's like this surfing on the web and I'm shooting at three web three, right? I've been goaded when I got my G, goaded G, right? I'm an alien boy from a different planet. So that's why I got my drink. So I know that the alien boys, they had a, a whiskey or a scotch, right? What is it? Whiskey, whiskey right? Whiskey, I think it was a whiskey, yeah. I got two right, bottles so of it. So for me, I'm going to be that intricate in what I do because that's, just, I'm talking about people. I'm talking about groups. I'm talking about something that I want people to go back and say, what did he say? What did he say? Oh, my God. He said that. Oh, yeah. It was like I was by myself with my helmet on until I met a mask that wanted to have a face off. So I wear a helmet's football, met a mask like I'm in a white boat surrounded by blue open sea. Right. You see what I'm saying? So uh -huh. like th those are the types of things that I'm doing that. Shoot. If I. Look, look, you're going to keep me going now. Don't, it, don't it works. Going. No, it I works like this. I like this. Things. It works for certain <laughs> things. Sometimes we have to dumb it down. You know what? You know, like sometimes yeah. it, 
that like different songs require certain different songs, things. Certain yeah, songs, sure. yeah, certain songs. Mm -hmm. What is your process then? I am curious because like, like I remember it was specifically, I think you said, I call my girlfriend Quinn because she rides my Harley or something like that. That just sort of clicked. I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? Like, I just heard that and it just, like you said, it made me stop and be like, wait, what is he saying? Like, let me, let me listen again. Like it's, it's just so much more rich, so much more of an art than right. sort of the dumbed down could be. Right. Yeah. So for sure. I mean, my process will be if I see a word. Um, so that the whole line about the Harley Quinn, um, I was literally talking to my dad on the phone um, and, you know, Bundy gave me a couple of ideas for the goat song. And he was like, uh, it's like, yeah, I was just watching the, um, the, uh, what's, what's the, uh, uh, not Joker. What's my, what's my man's name with, uh, DC, uh, with Will Smith. Suicide um, Squad? Suicide Squad. Okay. He's like, yeah, I was watching Suicide Squad and I didn't know Harley had a, um, you know, she came out in the cage and, and I was like, oh, Harley. Harley Davidson, motorcycle, Harley, and my at the same time, my girl, she had uh uh pigtails, but they were French braids. So right then and there, I just said, let me put everything together into that one line. And that's how I that's how I created that. So something so creative and I'm always thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you sure. record that stuff? If it comes to you, do you have almost like a notepad with you all the time? Throw it in your phone, something you uh, voice memo? Yes. Yeah, so don't do this. Don't text when you drive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I work far from from Tampa, so it takes me like an hour and a half to get to work. Mm -hmm. So within that hour and a half, I'm literally listening to instrumentals the whole ride. I'm jotting down ideas. If I see uh, a license plate from a different state, I'm saying like, okay, Ohio, O-H-I-O. How can I be creative in that space? Or if I see a billboard that says electric, okay, electric, static, I'm putting all those words together. And if I come up with something, then I'll write it down. Um, that's just depending on the beat, right? If I'm, if I'm listening to something that's guitar or rock and roll, I'm going to think about those, uh, those uh those those bands or those artists from from back in the day so the well, that one song i did with mass dimps golden roses if you really go listen to that i'm naming out damn near every band reverse the acdc um you know sound like some demons because i remember you know there was a trial that a kid thought the devil was speaking into speaking to him while he was reversing it so that's why I put in that line. So people are not going to understand that. I took kiss, my tongue out, kiss, um, you know, uh, the jungle, you know, like I, I named. That's how creative I want to be um, just to make people really go back and listen. And if they're fans of those artists and those people, then they're going to be like, oh, damn. OK, so he's he's really talking about the people that I care about. You know, and that's and that's why I, that's how my whole writing process is. Do you innately like puzzles? Are you drawn to puzzles? Yeah, matter of fact, look, my son's uh, assignment <laughs> says, says crossword puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it really oh, feels yeah. like finding all these yeah. little threads and putting them together yeah. because there is, I mean, it's an art form. It's a, it's almost like magic at times because it's like when the stuff's revealed, it's right. like as it unfolds, I should say, you're just like, oh, that's like, that's something special for sure. And I think that's so, so valuable. Right. Right. So for me, I would say like this. OK, so I was watching. And I know I'm talking so much, but please forgive me. Um, no, this is perfect. This is a show about you guys. So <laughs> this is exactly what I want. <laughs> so don't don't take this the wrong way, but you look like Brad Pitt. So I was watching Troy the other day. So now my mind's thinking of like Brad Pitt, like BP, fill it up with gas. And then you then it's a drag because in, in Troy, he dragged the uh, the body of the uh the guy um the pr the future king in the movie after he killed him so i'm going to achilles and i'm going like that's how my mind is working when i'm thinking of a topic or something like that so that's how i would just put everything together uh-huh yeah i love that do you find um that that gets in the way at all like focusing yes. on convo yes. because like it's just that yes. creativity yes. so strong <laughs> it's just there yes 
Yes. One hundred percent. Oh my God! Look, okay, they know. That's why we have know. to tell them about the dumb it down. Because so here we go. I'm and not have, that it's bad. Okay. Not that but it's bad. We, it's just sometimes it's too much. Certain songs, I I told them every song I have to at least throw one thing in there. They if they let me do it, I'm good. Like that. Let me let me just go. You know they know, but I I know there's certain songs where I'm just gonna keep it basic, none too crazy. Um, sometimes if I get into a zone, I'll reword some stuff around so it's not too lyrical. <laughs> How long does a typical like, song take, sort of start to finish, sort of across the entire spectrum of the audio itself? The, like the recording process, process or writing? Yeah, record, yeah recording. So, well, yeah, so I was sort of thinking, yeah, starting with the writing. And then getting it to the oh. point where you're like, okay, now we're ready to record. What does that usually look like? The writing's like 10 minutes for him. It's, <laughs> it's the recording that takes the time. But seriously, it's, it's crazy how his mind really works. Like it, 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 it shocks me sometimes. Like the things that he thinks, like it goes over my head sometimes, mm. you know, like that's what I mean. But like, sometimes we got to dumb it down. Cause if I don't understand it and I know yeah. what you're talking about, yeah, there's a problem, you know? So yeah. it's, it's a fine line there, just like anything else. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think what Bundy introducing me to Skylar, our engineer, um, my recording process will take a little bit longer because he knows that I'm able to do a lot of different things besides just punch in. So over the years, I've been, you know, been able to do singing so to speak so a lot of the songs that i've done i hear something when i go in there but he's like no nah, you can do it better you know what you they all right now give me give me r&b bruce like they know when that's time so i'm not just like i said i'm not going to be just punching in i can do it but i think skyler bundy the whole team they know that if i'm going to put out a song they know that i can tap into different different parts of it you know mm -hmm. and punching what, in, what, is, what is that uh, in reference to so punching in is is basically your your freestyling mm. right so after that last little word you would just say something else real quick like I, all right just play the beat let me play the beat play the beat all right i'm gonna go down to the beach and he would just play that in a loop and you say i'll go on this down the street yeah like so it's just a repetitive mm -hmm. little quick thing which People can knock out, shoot, in two hours, people can knock out maybe 15 songs that um, that can just do wonders. But at the same time, it's not, well, it's a different writing process. Yeah. Yeah, you're going for a but, different different product yeah, in the end. Exactly. Different genre, different yeah. everything, really, at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So who are you listening to right now? Uh, both of you It's fun. It's it's funny when I tell people this, I literally have a playlist of all of our stuff and that's it. Like I really don't listen to any other, other music because mm -hmm. I don't need to. He's the one that needs to be creative, you know, so it's good for him to listen to other people. But if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? I literally listen to nothing else. It's wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, it's uh, a, lo a lot of underground artists um, that probably don't get to see the, the light of day, so to speak, um, that they, they have like a cult following. Mm -hmm. Um, so lately at the gym, I would listen to like Montana 300, which he's, he's been blowing up for a little while. One take Timmy. Um, I go back to a Kendrick little verse that I've heard, you know, like something freestyles, whatever. But if I've gotten to a point where if I have an instrumental that's so different and unique, I'm going to go to listen to a Katy Perry or Avril Lavigne or the pop music. Or I'm going to go back and listen to um the commodores and figure out how do they what are they singing in this song why are they talking about this how are they singing their melodies like that's how that's where i'm going i'm going to a whole different man i was watching i was watching a documentary on Sh shania twain uh i was just i was gonna ask about the country song how who you followed <laughs> to come up yeah with so that. it's like blake shut like blake shut like shania twain I like Garth Shelton, Trump. So. yeah like i go I'm going to go into every genre because that's, I just don't want to be considered just one thing. Mm -hmm. So if we're able to put out music or write music for other artists, 
I need to understand their story, right? I need to understand their history of punk rock um, or grudge music. You know, like I went back to, yeah, grudge in Seattle when it all started, like uh, Kurt Cobain, you know, things like that, where I'm pretty sure a lot of people I work with or I know they, why are you listening to this? But for me, it's understanding that each person they have a story each genre they have a following they have they have fans so why not reach out to those artists why not understand who they are or how they write you know my writing process is just mine but i need to know everybody else's so i can become better yeah definitely yeah the more you know the more you experience the more you're taking in especially for art you want to you want to consume because you're I don't know if you've ever seen the book Steal Like an Artist, but it's written by Austin Kleon, an amazing book. And his whole thing is basically that all art is reimagined. Like we we mm-hmm. we consume what we consume and then we create based off of that. And it's not a copy. It's not actually stealing. Like he literally right. is like, this is how you create art. Right. And yeah, it's just, yeah, so important, so valuable. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys I taking the time. I, yeah, I appreciate it. I really love your approach. I love... <laughs> how lyrical it all is i love that so like to me that really speaks to me and it makes me be like okay we need to get even more out of you here <laughs> like i want to hear more you know which is just it's awesome i mean and my mind's just constantly going because like there's someone i've had on the show before chris cernell he's i'm in chicago he was here he did a um he was in a touring rock band and this and this nice. and that sort of local area but what he ended up doing is moving into fully into production and doing like like jingles for commercials and this and that he'll have something on like just whatever tv commercial and here and there and yeah it's his full-time approach he's writing recording he'll bring in some uh some singers sometimes otherwise he sings right. but i don't know my mind's just going i'm like no we yeah. can we didn't get you guys like well okay you're already full-time but we didn't get you full-time <laughs> like <laughs> like there's a, yeah, there's we a can, well, there. listen me me and bundy look we'll go anywhere we'll meet anybody we'll mm-hmm. i want to learn Mm-hmm. If there's anything that I can do, because uh, if he's been doing this for so long, you've been doing uh, this and you know certain things that I don't know, that's the conversation. Like, teach me because I'm always mm-hmm. I'm always ready to learn. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And the skill set, the experience that you have, both of you, but it's so valuable to others that there's yeah there's definitely definitely synergy there so i don't know it's gonna be lovely stewing on on things for a little bit but definitely yeah we should we should talk soon again or talk again at some point just to run through things but yeah anytime let us know and bundy where should we send people i know it was like 20 minutes ago but where should we send people (laughs) to check out what you're doing you can find you can find me everywhere at rnr underscore bundy I want to thank Bruce and Bundy for joining me on this episode. Be sure to follow along and see everything that they're up to and uh, check out the music videos. I will link them down below because it is it, seriously, they've done an amazing job on them and it really blew me away. And they've they've sort of had some virality in it. Actually, I need to show you, Amara, the, the videos still. But oh, there, <laughs> there, now you're switching the camera. Smiling at the camera and I wasn't even on it. <laughs> but yeah, um... Yeah, it's just really impressive work that they've done, especially now that you're doing videography. I think it's going to, uh, I think you're going to really appreciate what they've created. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You showed me a little bit before and I was blown away. I uh-huh. was like, holy shit. Are these like, I mean, they are like professionals, but it's like such amazing work. And mm-hmm. I loved hearing uh, Bruce's writing process and everything yeah. too. I was like, I totally get that because when I'm drawing stuff or illustrating, I'm in a totally different world. Like, you can't talk to me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I need ears on this or whatever. So, uh-huh. yeah, well, yeah, fun. Yeah, putting those pieces together, those threads, solving those puzzles and everything is something that is, uh, yeah, it speaks to me. Is that what you're pointing at me? <laughs> well, yes. And it reminded me of American Pie, the, the song by Don McLean that I've mm. always serenaded you with, where it's just that really deep, uh, you don't know what this means. And then you go back, like you said, and it's just like, wait, what was that? Huh. And then you have to go back and re-listen and dissect it. And I love that. Like, uh-huh. It's amazing. Yeah. It's like theory and philosophy in a song. Uh huh. Yeah. So we're all about the uh, go for overly lyrical. That's what we vote yes, for. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> no, no, no. It totally makes sense. Though. All of it makes sense. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah they're crushing fun. it. So just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, 
thanks again for uh, tuning in. If you're enjoying the show, hit subscribe. Give us a little thumbs up. And I think with that, we will wrap. Again, I'm Jeff Saris. This has been Starting Now, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>